It's called a professional concern. Congratulations, Mr. Hope. An excellent set of results. You must be very proud, rightly, sir. Thank you, but keep up the good work. Aren't you coming, Nurse Lane? I understand you were involved. Coming where? Mr. Griffin has called an emergency MDT meeting to decide the way forward. Um, I wasn't invited, Mr. Hampson. That must be an oversight on his part. All those who were involved in the patient's care should attend the meeting. I'll see you in there. As Miss Swain's just pointed out, keeping Mrs. Harp on, on life support would require the maintenance of a multidisciplinary team. It would be a huge drain on equipment and resources. I have to take that into consideration. Sorry I'm late. Chantal. Welcome. Come in, Nurse Lane. So, Mr. Griffin, your thoughts, please. Sarah Harpen is my patient, and uh, we are here to discuss her best interest. As you know, until a baby is delivered, it has no legal rights. Therefore, the debate whether to keep the mother alive as an incubator is an ethical rather than a legal one. Mr. Thompson? Well, at 25 weeks, we would normally deliver the baby as a matter of course. However, a fetus of this gestation, though viable, is statistically at a high risk of respiratory complication, mental retardation, even blindness. Given the tragic circumstances of the mother's death, I understand that it's not unlikely to have been starved of oxygen. The outcome is pretty bleak, yes. Having said that, if there was no oxygen deprivation and, and we were able to keep the mother on life support for a, a reasonable period of time, then the baby would have a fighting chance. My concern is that keeping Sarah alive gives her husband false hope when we can offer him no guarantee of a reasonable, let alone good, outcome. Now, there's no getting away from the fact that this baby is at significant risk of major disability. You've seen it before, Rick. We all have. Now, we need to think very carefully whether it's right, comfortable death. And then Mr. Harpen can grieve for his terrible loss. All right, does anyone have anything to add? Yes, I do. I believe I got to know Sarah Harpen better than any of you. So if no one's going to stand up for what she would have wanted, I will. This baby was much longed for. With Sarah's medical history, almost a miracle. And we all witnessed her drive to protect her. Her initial refusal of MRI proved that with every decision, she put her baby first. Mr Griffin, you said that if we were able to maintain Sarah on life support, then the baby might have a chance. Sure, there'd be a chance, but... As Miss Campbell has pointed out, extremely unlikely. It's very unusual for anyone with brainstem death to be maintained for longer than 48 hours. A time frame that will make no difference to the outcome for this baby. I found these articles online, and some of the mothers were kept alive for four weeks or more, allowing the babies to develop almost to term. These cases are extremely rare. I understand that, but who's to say that Sarah can't be one of them? It's a fair point. What if the doctors had dismissed the potential of these babies like you're doing now? Well, Mr. Griffin, your patient, you have the final say. Either way, you will have to obtain the husband's consent. 